Okay, so I have to do this a different way because recording... See, I've been able to do this before, except now there's a bit of a problem when I'm using an inline microphone and try to use line in. It doesn't work together. So unfortunately, I am going to have to record the audio separately and put it all together later on because I literally have no way to do it. So let's begin a new game of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Let's see. Whoa, okay. Let me look here. So one, episode two. Are you going to be episode one? Why would I go to anything else? I mean, I assume it's because my sister played this, so she probably unlocked everything, right? All right. New game. Uh, I mean, of course, the first turnabout. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Episode one, the first turnabout, like I said. Oh, shit, is that blood? Gasp. Gasp. Whoa, someone's hand is all messed up, it looks like. Or, whoa. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. Well, we have a murder. Oh, I see. I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like... Him. I'll make it look like he did it. I feel like they're already telling us who did the murder. Which is kind of bizarre. August 3rd, 1940, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. I can... It's gonna be weird to do. At least it lets me click on my own case. Boy, am I nervous! Right! Oh, jeez. Oh, hiya, Chief! Whew! I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm, so, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Hmm? Isn't that your client, screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death. Despair. Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. Oh, well, really? Um, yeah. Eh. Uh, Nick, whoa. He's butts. Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Oh yeah, I'm also yeah, I'm playing this on a DS. I'm not playing the uh, other version, you know. Well, you know, you know what I mean, right? Anyway, hope my audio's not. Too hey, I'll figure everything out. This uh, will be a bit rough on the first one. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. A person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. Uh-oh, I gotta defend him because he obviously didn't do it. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the Butts. Oof. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. What a nice guy Phoenix is. Help me as childhood friend who might be accused of murder. Ooh, August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Oh! The court is now in session for trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Yeah, I'm gonna do weird uh, voices. How about that? The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. <clears throat> Mr. Wright? This is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm uh, a little nervous. 
Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, your honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your re readiness. Y yes, your honor. G Hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Oh, well, isn't it Larry Butts? The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, your honor. Correct! Uh, I didn't know that judges did this in trials. Just keep your wits about and you'll do fine! Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report to cover, to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh, oh... No. No way. I forgot. I'm trying to throw a blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Of course, I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button and to check at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Do it for you? Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Well, let's check the court record because I have no idea who it is. I would say it's Cindy Stone just for the fun of it. Tony's badge and Cindy's... Cindy? Time of death is... I guess that would be uh, July 31st, 4 to 5 p.m. Cause of death is the loss of due to blood trauma from Mia Fey. That's the attorney's badge. So it's Cindy. Cindy Stone, like I thought it would be. I just took a... Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct! Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Well, at least they have the court record here. I mean, I guess it's kind of like Danganronpa. Due to bl uh, blunt trauma, so she obviously she was hit by something. Hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. For some reason I have... When I imagine his voice, it's like Taka from Danganronpa 1. Correct! You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Y yes, yet Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Who would it? Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. The, the whole statue or a replica? Please tell me it's a replica. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. That you added to the court record. Yay! Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the control re the court record, the control record, the court record button to check the court record frequently. Oh! Mr. Payne, prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the pr prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Could be. It was, ahem, Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, Mark, Anthony! That doesn't sound good, actually. That, 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 that's not good. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls, or seeing me, ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. Ooh, what a slut. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Hmm. Is it a guy she met in Paris? A guy she went to Paris with? 
Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddy. Oh, Jesus Christ, maybe she deserves to die. Wait, I know, that's a wrong thing to say. That's wrong thing. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Oh, this box is in my way. I was looking at it before because I was trying to figure something out. Because apparently my Elgato doesn't have a line in like I wanted it to for once, so whatever. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah. Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Wait and see what ha Stop him from answering? My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to the case. Ooh! Ooh, he was wincing. Dude! Nick! What do you mean, irrelevant? Why is he calling him Nick? That cheating... She-dog! I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the ac accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh. Well, did you, or did you not? Heh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went... What do I do? Have him answer... Oh, God. This is, uh... I have no idea. None of these will help me, obviously. If I have him answer honestly... <laughs> but stopping him makes him look suspicious. Oh, God. Oof. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell... The truth. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. What? <laughs> Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Uh-oh. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Blah, 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 blah. Isn't it fun, these old graphics on a DS? Order. Order in the court. Actually, I gotta keep an eye on my laptop, because I'm using this on my laptop to record. I can't... It's so complicated. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Who the hell are you? You sell newspapers? Aren't you the killer? Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. His testimony. Okay. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving. Dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Ooh, I just found a hole in your argument. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. I can find an objection. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, 
I have a record of the blackout. For your per per perusal. Perusal. Blackout record added to the thingy. No, Mr. Wright. Yes! Er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination. Your Honor? All right, right? This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out contradictions in the testimony. Well, I know exactly what it is. Cross-examination. Okay. Present. Oh, press? No. Okay, how do I do this? Why? Which one's the why? Forget it. Okay. Okay, I see. I have to object. Oh, he must be in a hurry. I know what it is here. It's the time. Because he said 1 p.m., but... The time in the record was 4 to 5 p.m. This is the objection, isn't it? Hold it. Wait, what? On. Press. Oh, hold it. Here. 1 p.m.? Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. He seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. Okay, that's how I do it now. Present... Uh, the, uh... Cindy's autopsy report, see? Right here. Present that. OBJECTION! There we go, I got my first objection. You found the body at 1 p.m.? You sure? Yes! It was 1 p.m. for certain! I keep changing his voice, I forget my voices. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? <laughs> oh, that. Oh, er. Ah, you. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Hmm, that's a. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit. Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Also, you said you have a record of the blackout at 1 p.m. So that means you have a record to back up that false statement. I, or well, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait! I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Alright, time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. You just said there was a blackout. I just... <laughs> hmm. I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. I guess compared to Dang and Rampa, this is a bit easier to do. This, no, I don't have to, like, manage statements floating around, tr truth bullets, and these mini-game things. Well, I mean, those are kind of fun, too, but... This is a nice, ch kind of slower-paced version, I guess, but it's also the first trial. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Of course. You said there was a blackout. So how could you have heard the TV? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? 
Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. He heard the time. Yeah, well, oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Can't I present now? I guess the victim must have been watching a video on it. Well, I can present the uh, blackout record. Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <gasps> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. Why is there so much flashing in this game? <laughs> I... well... Er... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this? Mr. Sawit? It flashes even on a... I'll just make sure it's not my recording thing. No, uh, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Oh, wait, I remember now. Mr. Sawit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That... That, and you seem rather distraught. Gah! M my apologies, Your Honor. It... Uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Final chance, bro. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Oh, well, that's an obvious lie, too. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. All right, then. I don't know what's with the Y holding thing. Actually, I didn't hear the time. There was a table clock in the apartment. It wasn't there. Yeah, the murder weapon. Oh, yeah? I think because I can shout. Hold it! Hold it! On. You know what? Just press. Okay, I think... Whatever. Press. I tried to shout into it, but it didn't work. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. Must have been what I saw. Now, find a contradiction. Easy. Present the murder weapon, the statue. Yeah, I can do it any time, looks. The evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence and the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making that oh, okay, you do have to do a specific point. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. Okay, so I have to do it. I do have to do it. Actually, in here, there was a table clock. Yeah, the murder weapon. Present. Now I can hold it. I do have to do it at the right time. Your Honor, that statement contradicts the evidence. Hmm? It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Uh-huh? Really? Objection overruled. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Wright. What? Whoops! That didn't go so well. Uh, okay... Oh, wait, shit! I think I hit the wrong thing. Now find a contradiction. Yeah, I didn't hear. I think I presented the wrong thing. Yeah, the murder weapon. I think I presented the wrong thing. I think I presented the blackout by accident. This is it. Wait just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. I, I chose the wrong thing. I don't know why I did that. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Well, at least I'm learning how to not do things. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Gah, you, you with your objections and your evidence. Just what do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey. I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. 
Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Uh, yes. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... knew the victim. Knew the victim? Tell me, isn't it true that you knew the victim? In fact, you are one of her sugar daddies. Be frank with us, Mr. Sawit. Hmm. Frank? I'm always frank. Your Honor, we have complete recordings of the victim's relationships. Mr. Frank Sawit does not appear anywhere. Huh? Oh, really? Please, Mr. Wright. Is huh the best response you can muster up? Try to refrain from making off-the-cuff accusations in the future. Y yes Your Honor. Let me think this over. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Oh, uh, went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Okay, I'm, I'm getting used to how Phoenix Wright works. Order in the court! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, had gloves on, too. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Oh, it's a statue. I was wondering what that was. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... Th that day, I never... Look, I... The clock... I, I heard no... I mean, I saw... I saw... Oh, whoa! Toupee. <laughs> Not touche, toupee. Shut up, shut up, I hate you! It was him, I tell you, I saw him. He killed her and he should burn. Burn! Give him death. Give him death like you killed uh, Miss Cindy? Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, uh, a moment please. This, there isn't a shred of evidence supporting the, the defense's claims. Mr. Wright? Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Examine the name. Examine the clock's batteries. Doesn't really make sense. Ask the neighbors. Try sounding the clock? What? Try sounding the clock? What does that even mean? Ask the neighbors is stupid, I think. Uh, examine the batteries. Doesn't really make sense. I'll try sounding the clock. I don't know what that means. Let's sound the clock now. Hear it in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 1125. Oh god, three hour gap. Ack! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. <sighs> you forgot one thing. Uh oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like this clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? You can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright? It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. 
This means I cannot let your you indict the witness. Unfortunately, uh oh. This ends the cross examination, Mr. Frank Sawick. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. I lost. There's nothing I can do about it now. Game over. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Oh! Mia! I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right, right? <laughs> Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Uh, I'll say yes. Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this, this evidence that proves why the clock was turning slow. Would it be the passport? Because she got it in France? Wait, would that be it? Statue, Cindy's autopsy report. I can't record. I'll try to passport? This would be right at Paris on 7th, the day before the murder. Let's try and present this one. The victim had just returned from home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day, th there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast! The victim hadn't reset the clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the, her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit. Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> He's foaming and collapsing. That, I mean, that's guilty as guilty can be. Order! Order, I say. Well... This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He, er, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Yay! And with that, the court is adjourned. Turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. Oh, he's a burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. Oh, that's it. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawa let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawa grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. I mean, a burglary turned into a murder, really? It's third, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant, Lobby, Number 2. Whew! I still can't believe we won. Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battle in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen Chiefs looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry! You're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean, 
Bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was, uh, nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butt's innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh, no. I couldn't. <laughs> hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. Fuck you, as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you, in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, Soki. Soki, oh, Soke. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him. Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Uh, attorney's badge, Cindy's autopsy. I guess it would be the statue? The fact that she had it? Check this out, Larry. Who positive you weren't just some chump to her? Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Hmm, she probably just needed a clock. That's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take a traveling. Well, make what you will of it. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe. Over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Huh? That is weird. The end. Oh, sure. Save, yeah. Saving. Press start any time during the game, huh? Are all the episodes always available? Turn about sisters. Huh. Well, I guess I can start it. See what it's about. Burring, burring. Seems like a short game or something. Beep. Hello? Hey, Maya, it's me. Mia? What's up? You haven't called me in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How you been? Well, lonely. It's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you. Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's... Clock. Clock? 
Yeah, it's made to look like this, this, that statue. The thinker. It tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now. Now, now. You know I'm only teasing. Ah, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clock work out. Sorry. I put some papers inside instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm. Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way. Yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say 9, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like... Burgers! I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright! It's a deal! Okay, sis. See you soon! Yep. I'll be waiting. Maybe. Wait, does it say maybe? I don't know. Beep. Conversation recorded. September 5th, 927am. Mmm. Suspicious stuff going on here. September 5th, 8.57pm. Fan Company Law Office. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why? I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Ho ho! You are not configurous, coniferous of my background? Gathering information is my business, you see. I... I should have been more careful. Ho ho! My dear Miss Faye, I am so very sorry. But I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Uh-oh. Farewell, Miss Faye. Oh, God. <laughs> what is with this statue? Well, well, look at this joker. Well, damn, Mia's dead. Red, white, blue. Turnabout sisters. Great. Well, we already lost her. September 5th, 9.08 p.m. Faye and Company Law Offices. Is, is Wright going to discover? Uh-oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. Chief must have gone home early. I'll go hunting home already. She said her sister was coming over so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Hey, she's in her office. Examine. Uh... Smell blood. That can't be good. I have to check and see if Mia, the chief's okay. I guess I gotta move. Move. Office. This is weird. That smell. Blood. <laughs> Sis. Someone's there. Chief. 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 You know what? I didn't say it, but I thought something was going to happen to her at some point. Either she was going to be involved in something, or she was going to end up dying. Poor you. She fainted. I know her, kind of. She's like, uh, well, on the box, she's like a puffy face pouting person. The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Dead, obviously. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally, she was cold. Chief. Examine. I wonder if I can... I can move it like that. It's encrusted with dry blood. How ironic that this became the murder weapon again. Okay, I examine the chief too. Chief! It's hard seeing her like this, but if there's any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker, lying next to her, must have been the murder weapon. The thinker added to the uh, court record. Will my badge ever be evidence? Hmm. There are some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Glass shards added to the court record. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm? A piece of paper. It must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? Uh, I 
can barely even see it on the screen, and uh, he's, oh, there it is. The original DS doesn't have great lighting. Maya. A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya. Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store, dated yesterday. Receipt added to the court record. So Maya's probably going to be the one who's going to be charged. Or, you know, well, yeah, she's... Obviously. I think that's enough, snooping around for now. I'd better call the police. Find out what that girl was doing here. Oh, she's definitely innocent. I gotta call the police. I gotta find a phone. Here's a phone. Right. I better call the police. That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please! Come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from the outside of the window? What the? She's staring right at me! She's holding a phone in her hand! Oh, jeez. Do I go back to the window? It's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel. A nice, luxurious place. Oh, what am I doing now? Okay, hold on a second. Let me use the computer. The phone's been disconnected, so now the police is being called. This is weird. Are you obviously... She's... Examine what? Some shards of glass on the floor. Okay, I've already... Let's examine this. The bank company ledger book. Everything is written in Chief's ultra-neat handwriting. It's a small office. It makes a good bit of money. Computer? Surprisingly, the Chief was never good with machines. Not all she used this PC was for it was email. She picked up this ancient model at some garage sale for practically nothing. The phone's probably not going to work still. The phone receiver is missing a few screws. I better not use it. Hmm. The chief's chair. A simple functional design. Feels pretty good to sit in, too. So I'm gonna just try to gather evidence right now. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. This is where she filed her case records and recent rulings. Hmm, I'm really confused now. Well, what if I go back? Move? Actually, what if I do move? Oh, that's what I had to do. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Uh-oh. Hope she didn't run on me. Oh, I'm gonna be the accused, aren't I? Yapes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay. I work here. Maya. Maya Faye. Maya Faye? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name? Maybe I should show her the receipt? Never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside of the courtroom. All right, present the thing here. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. So she didn't die instantly, by the way. Th that's my name. Why? Why would she write my name? What if she didn't? Please, just calm down. Why would she just write my name? Uh oh. Now I've done it. Wee woo wee woo wee woo. The police! Sounds like they're c coming this way. Freeze! Police! Oh, I know you. I've seen you in avatars on Discord. Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. You received a report from the building across the way, see? Uh, got a person saying they saw a murderer! <laughs> Must have been that woman I saw. Jesus Christ, she laying hurt. Drugs hang out. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Got a little Chief Wiggum, uh... What's his name again? Uh, old gangster movies from the 30s. Great. Just great. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have... Nah. Whoa! Excuse me. Eek! This word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that... That's my name. What? 
custom drew this here note in her own blood. See? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. The killer? I'm not... Case closed. You're coming down to the pre precinct, ma'am. What? Edward G. Robinson. Edward G. Roberts. Uh, Robinson, whatever. Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around, waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6, 9.07 a.m. Detention center. Visitor's room. Wow. They have poor Maya locked up in a like a criminal. Oh. It's you, the lawyer. Good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um... Are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. It's up to you. Of course I will. <laughs> Not a chance. Of course I will. First things first. I better get her cheered up. Yeah, of course I will. Cheer up. Really? Whoa, did I say the wrong thing? She looks sadder now. Um, what's wrong? You don't think I can do it? No, no one could. Who would believe me? Even you. You found me in the office. You looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no. I never thought. It's okay. I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's t first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Heh. <laughs> so he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh? Sounds like he was- It was fun. Well, I know who got- Who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. Oof. That's what she said. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to trouble you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Mia... I know. Let's see. Let's uh, talk. To... Maya? There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. The day of the crime. Spirit mediums. So you're an acolyte. A medium in training. That's right. The Faye family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second. You said the Faye family? So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. She, she left the mountain to follow her career, she said. The powers were first class too. Uh, I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. What? So you're a real honest-to-goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yes, in training. Well... Can't you contact Mia's spirit, then? You can just ask her who killed her. I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that would be too easy. I guess the day of the crime. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes. That clock shaped like the thinker. One Larry made? How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right. She said something about that. I remember. Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. Recorded it? Yeah. I forgot how to delete those things. You don't accidentally just record something. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your, your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right. Oh, I just remembered. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry. 
Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure. Thanks. Alright, well. See the note I got from Maya. Um. Huh? Something the matter? Um. I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me the, this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in the trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. Refuse? I'm sorry. I think this is the kind of thing you should really do yourself. You're right. Something wrong? Actually, I asked the police to contact him, and they tried calling a few times. Nobody could get a hold of him. They couldn't find him? I have no one left to ask. Say, what about your parents? They're dead. They're dead. Okay, don't worry. I'll go ask him for you. You will? Thank you so much. I'm just worried what will happen if I can't find him. I uh, can't find him. They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 this afternoon. The visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right. I'll be back. Uh, day of the crime. It's still not checked. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see. That morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold onto a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around 9. I, I actually missed some text, but it's fine. He was just talking to himself. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her. My sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. Back. Um... I don't think I have anything to present. No, nothing to present. Well, I guess I will... Let's examine. How many is anything to examine here? I guess move? The Gro Grossberg Law Office, I guess. September 6, Grossberg Law Offices. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. I bet he did it. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Oh, uh, examine. Is this him? That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil painting is so thick it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. I'm sure the price is nothing but to sneeze at either, for that matter. Anything else to examine here, I wonder? I don't know, he likes collecting shit. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive looking books. Hmm? Funny, they don't look like they've ever been read. I don't think there's really anything I can examine here, so I guess back. Move. To the detention center? Hey! What is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry. I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm, I'd better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. Okay, well then, maybe he's in the, uh... Here? Number six, Ray and Company Law Offices. That's a different part. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there! This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no. Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butts guy. He was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were... Detective Gumshoe. Heh. <laughs> Suede shoes. Or Gumtree. Uh, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe. Right. At your service. Hang on. That's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick. Get over here. Yes, sir. Be right there. Guess he's not a uh, top dog. Uh, hmm. You're her lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew, he thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. 
All right, let's uh, present with this memo. I was wondering, did you see my my face cell phone? Oh, that I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh oh, he's got he's onto me. Tell him straight. <laughs> Hmm, if I tell him why I want it, there's no way he'll give it to me. Fine. Something the matter? Oh, no. It's just, you know, detective? Nope. I know nothing, pal. Someone has a lot of numbers on it, like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds a little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. <laughs> You're trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-huh. Oh, here. You can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious call, re call records in there, after all. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Alright, I got the cell phone. Check the court record to hear the recorded conversation. Nice. Do I do it now? Not really. Talk. Mia? What? But Miss Faye, did you do an autopsy? Hmm, you want to know the results, eh? Now, don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. All right, all right. You can see the report, but that's all. Yay. I mean, it's pretty obvious what happened. Maya. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? City's public put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth? I'm sure you know what that means. You being a lawyer and all. I guess I've asked all the questions I need to. You're, you're all done, pal? Um, yes. Thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. Oh, her? Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. Witness to what? The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you've seen her home already then? Haha, <laughs> you're trying to lure your loyally tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Let's talk about Edgeworth, though. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Of course I do. I say I do. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, uh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So, Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with a, almost, an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. I guess that's all I can do here for the moment. Move. I guess I would go to the uh, Gatewater Hotel. September 6th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Whoa! Well, hello there, handsome! Why do you have your hands like that? Um, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're a lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Hee <laughs> hee. That will sell. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee. This is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting I can hardly contain myself. Oh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the, of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. Oh, it's going to be you for sure, man. So I think I'm going to save the game here. Saving, saving. I think you only have one save on it. Oh, and then take. And once you save, that's it. You're done. Game's like... Screw you, you decide to save. That's it. We don't care anymore. Alright, so that concludes 
this part here. And it's enjoyable so far, but obviously the first case was the easiest, which I still messed up on a few, little bit anyway. It doesn't matter. So, thanks for watching the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Part 1. And, well, probably shouldn't be too long of a game. I'd say about six, seven parts, maybe. Depending on how fast I go, because I'm already on Trial 2, and it looks to be only five. And I'm sure they get longer as we go along. But, until then, people, so long.